Okay, hello guys. Well, first of all, thank you for being here today, and also thanks for the to the organizers for taking care of such an amazing event. Uh, so today we're going to talk about upgradability and EVM packages, and the idea is to learn uh, some some things about these concepts, and of course, to see how we can leverage these concepts using Salvador Noas. But uh, before we begin, I would like to talk a little bit about us. We are Zeppelin, and at Zeppelin we build key technology and infrastructure to build, develop, and manage um, smart contract systems. Um, my name is Fago Spagnolo. I'm a core developer and security researcher at Zeppelin, and currently I'm leading the efforts of uh, Zeppelin OS. Maybe some of you may know us because of Open Zeppelin. Open Zeppelin is a community-driven um, open source framework of reusable modules of smart contracts that you can install and start using directly in your own projects. Um, you also do security audits. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, we finished the, the audit for the Solidity compiler. Uh, we received a, a grant from the Ethereum Foundation. It was really great. And well, as I said before, we're here today to talk a little bit about Sublin OS. Sublin OS is an open source platform to help you building, develop, and manage um, smart contract systems. So let's begin with the first topic, uh, upgradability. So of course, that uh, immutability is one of the main features of Ethereum. However, um, software quality uh, really much depends on, on a development that needs to be iterative and incremental. And this means that we need to have the chance to update or patch our code if we need to. And we're not ju just talking about bugs. Uh, we may need to uh, optimize our solutions. We may need to uh, provide new functionality because the community is requiring it or whatever. And the thing is that we've seen many other projects building their own um, implementations of upgradability. And Sublin OS is providing a standard and really flexible way to, to do this. So I would like to introduce an example of how we can easily have available smart contracts uh, in our projects using Sublin OS. So the first thing we'll need to do is to install uh, Sublin OS. In this case, we're using NPM. And Sublin OS comes with a command line tool. And in this case, for example, we have a init command that we can use to start a new project, just passing the, the name of our project. And let's say that we start writing our first smart contract. In this case, a wallet. As you can see, it has an owner. Uh, it has an initialization function where it receives the owner in order to set the owner of the contract. Uh, it has a withdraw function in order to uh, withdraw some funds from the contract, and so on. So uh, let's see how we can deploy an agreeable instance of this smart contract using Sublin OS. So the command line tool has some commands that are pretty much similar to the ones we use uh, in Git, so I think it will sound familiar to you. In this case, we're running the, the first command. The add command, it's the way we tell Zeppelin OS in order to add a new smart contract in our project. In this case, we're telling Zeppelin OS that we want to add uh, the main wallet contract that we wrote before. And the second step is the push command. This is how we upload uh, the bytecode of our contract to the, no to the network. In this case, for example, we're pushing the, the source code of the my wallet contract to the Robsten network. And finally, we have the create command. The create command will create an upgradable instance of the my wallet contract. And the address that we we'll receive there is the, the, the new instance that we have just created. And maybe some of you may be wondering why do we need to run these three steps in order to create an upgradable instance. Well, the thing is that this is not a regular instance, obviously. This is an upgradable instance. And the thing is that we can run the create command as many times as, as we want, and we'll be always reusing the same logic that we uploaded just once. So it's great. And let's say that after we created uh, the first instance, um, upgradable instance of my wallet contract, uh, we found the bug. Uh, as you can see, the init wallet uh, function can be called by anyone, and this means that, for example, an attacker can call the init wallet function to withdraw some funds from it. Uh, any resemblance with reality here is per coincidence. And let's say that we want to fix this bag. So let's see how we can do this with Sublin OS. I promise it's really simple. So the first thing we'll need to do is just to edit the, the source code of our contracts. For example, in this case, we're adding a, an only owner modifier in order to restrict um, 
the, the person they can call this uh, this uh, function. And once again, as we did it before, we just need to run the add command to tell SubNUS to add the new fixed uh, my wallet contract. We're pushing that fix to the network, and finally, we're running a new command here, the update command is the way to tell SubNUS to upgrade uh, the available instance that we created before, and it will be as simple as that. As you can see, an attacker cannot call anymore, they need wallet function, and our bug has been fixed. So it was pretty simple, we didn't have to modify our source code in order to make our contracts upgradable, um, as you can see, we're reusing the same address. It was an upgrade per se. We didn't have to like migrate data from the previous wallet contract to the new one. We're really upgrading it. So how was that possible? <laughs> um, I think that many many of you may know already this, but uh, we're using proxies in order to make it happen. And the way a proxy works, it's uh, it's a particular contract that basically delegates every call it receives to another contract that is called logic contract. Um, and the thing is that the, logic con the address of the logic contract can be changed, and this is how upgradability works. Um, as, you, as you can see, the storage layer, layer is always kept in the, in the proxy contract, and this is why we don't need to migrate or, or pay any like, expensive migrations of data when we want to do an upgrade of a contract. Um, we're not going to... Uh, so much deep in the, in the, in the um, proxy stuff, uh, but you can read more about it in, in our documentation if you want. Um, so summing things up, uh, Sublin OS provides a standard way in order to have upgradable, upgradable smart contracts in your projects that will basically allow you to fix bugs or add functionality, for example. Um, so let's move to the second topic, EVM packages. EVM packages, this is a new concept we introduced uh, some weeks ago. Uh, EVM packages are upgradable on-chain packages of smart contracts code. And this means um, code that, it, that it's already on-chain, deployed by another developer team, that it's being maintained by, by another developer team, that then any application can link directly through your own projects in order to reuse it directly on-chain. And it comes, of course, with opt-in upgrades, and this means that if the, that developer team that is developing an EVM package comes with a new version of the EVM package, you can decide where to upgrade your code to use the new version that they are providing or not. So um, why do we need EVM packages? We do think that this is a way in order to encourage uh, modular development. They think this is, you, can, you can start focusing on, on what you do best and start reusing uh, the work that your college has done. So. Um, we, we just don't need to build everything if, if we want to build something. We, we can start reusing some code that is already deployed on chain. And as I said before, EVM packages are upgradable by, by definition, and this means that their developers can provide new versions of the, those EVM packages, and you can opt in, decide where you want those upgrades in your projects or not. It's like any other dependency management system. And of course, we're saving a lot of gas costs because we're reusing some logic that is already deployed on-chain by those developer teams, and we don't have to redeploy the logic every time if we want to reuse it. Um, let's take a look at an, uh, another example. Um, let's say that we have a DEC contract in our project, and as you can see, um, it has a, an ERC721 dependency. Um, it has an initialized function in order to receive the, um, the ERC721 dependency, and it has another function uh, called pick that will basically allow any users to pick cards from the, from the contract, and you will be minting new ERC721 tokens every time a, users, a, a user picks a new card. Um, so how we can create an upgradable instance of this contract reusing an EVM package for the ERC721 dependency using Sublin OS? So it will be really simple once again. The first thing we should do is, and here is when it comes to the, the, the new part, the, the link command will allow you to link to any other EVM package that is already deployed on-chain. And in this case, we're linking our projects to the OpenSublin ETH EVM package. And this package is the EVM package that the OpenSublin team has provided on-chain. In this case, we're linking to the 2.0 version, and as we did before, we just need to push those changes to the network and Finally, we can run the create command, and as you can see here, we're creating an instance 
reusing the logic of the ERC721 that has been already deployed by the Open Sublime team. We haven't uh, added that contract in our, in our projects. We are reusing the same logic that the Open Sublime team has provided on chain for us. And we'll receive, of course, the address of our available instance of the ERC721 there. Um, so let's now create, let's use this new ERC721 instance in order to create an instance of our contract, the DEC contract. As we did before, in this case, we do need to add the, the DEC contract. So we, we're running there the add command. Then we're pushing the, the, the source code of the DEC contract to the network. And finally, we are running the create command in order to create a new instance of the DEC contract and passing here the address of the ERC721 instance that we created before. And we, re we will receive there the address of our available instance of the DEC contract. So as you can see, we can start reusing uh, the DEC contract, um, and, and it will be, we can start picking cards, we will be minting ERC721 um, um, tokens, it will be as, as simple as that. So this is amazing. <laughs> uh, we didn't have to deploy an ERC721 contract in order to reuse it, we're just reusing the one that the Open Sublime team has provided for us, and this is really cool. So I said before that EVM packages are upgradable by, by definition, and Let's see an example of what does it mean. Let's say that the Open Sublime team comes with a new version of their EVM package. In this case, the Open Sublime ETH, as I said before. And let's say that we want to use, use it in our project. And as you can see, uh, this is an opt-in decision I said before. Um, so in order to tell Sublime OS that we want to use that upgrade, that new version in our project, we need to tell Sublime OS that we want to link our project to the new version. As you can see here, we're linking our project to the 2.1 version of the Open Sublime ETH uh, EVM package. Once again, we're pushing uh, those changes to the network, and finally, we can run, run, in this case, the update command in order to update the upgradable instance that we created before of the ERC721 contract. And as you can see, we'll be pink, picking new uh, cards again with the same DEC contract that we created before. The address of the DEC contract hasn't changed. And we'll be uh, using this uh, new version of the ERC721. Um, it will be as simple as that once again. And as you can see, we didn't have to update our DEC contract. We just need to update the dependency that we're using in our project. In this case, the ERC721. Um, so summing things up. Um, EVM packages allows us to reuse code that is already deployed on chain, that we don't have to redeploy it every time we want to use it. And of course, we can, as, as we saw before, we can opt in, update our dependencies if the developers of those EVM packages that we're linking to provide new versions. So this is really good. And let's go a little bit uh, further on the EVM packages thing. Maybe some of you may be wondering how we can actually make sure that, that the code what that we are sharing and reusing on chain directly is actually safe. How we can trust the code that is already deployed on chain. So, um, before we answer that, let's think how we should how, how we probably do this uh, these days. Uh, we may, for example, hire an auditor in order to audit that uh, code that was deployed on chain, and the auditor may raise uh, some findings on, on on that code, and we will tell the developer team to in order to fix those those bugs or to improve the, the things that we that we found there and it will be kind of um, expensive in order to hire an auditor to do that every time we want to use a new dependency and that's why we decided to, to start working on the on the vouching system of sublin OS um, this is a way to decentralize that those decisions and this is our first step uh, towards the the token mechanics that we've been announcing since since we started this project um, the first implementation of the of the vouching system, uh, we're really happy to announce that it's already included in the in the second version of Sublime OS we launched uh, this week. So let's see uh, what what, what, we have, what, we, what do we have to say about the, uh, about this. Um, so the vouching system basically allows users to back the quality of, a, of an EVM package that is already deployed. As you, can, as you can see, this is something complementary to the EVM packages thing. It doesn't mean that you need to. Uh, use the vouching system in order to create uh, an EVM package, but this is the way that this is the way that you can uh, use in order to sign signal your uh, the security of an EVM package that is already deployed. Uh, as you can see, this is our first step towards uh, 
a great, a, a great list of uh, secured EVM packages. And let's see a quick example of the things that we can do with the vouching system. For example, uh, raising here a way to register a new EV, EVM package on the vouching system of Sublin OS. It's pretty much really simple. You just need to pass the, the, the name of your uh, EVM package and the address where it's deployed, and it will be as simple as that. And of course, that you can also start vouching some amounts for uh, EVM packages that are already registered in the, in the vouching system. And the amounts that we are vouching here are not just numbers, and this is where the SEP token is born. Um, the SEP token is the native token of the vouching system, and it's basically what allows us to align the incentives in order to create a, a healthy ecosystem of secure smart contracts projects. And it was uh, also launched with a second version of Sublin OS, along with, uh, with the vouching system. And uh, one more thing, we're, we're not alone. There's a lot of amazing projects that already decided to start building their own EVM packages. And many of them are already uh, on-chain. They're already on the mainnet, so you can start reusing their code in your own projects uh, through Sublin OS. And you can be one of them too. So that's why we decided to start a private beta period. This is a way to... Uh, that we say to gather a small group of people in order to validate all these ideas. And all the partners that, that all, the, all, the, all the projects that I mentioned before are going to receive some SEP tokens in order to start testing the vouching system. And you can be one of them too. Um, all, just uh, a quick uh, um, clarification here. This doesn't mean that SEPLNOS is not uh, available for everyone. SEPLNOS, as I said before, is open source and you can use it right now if you want. Just, it, does, it does mean that the beta participants are the only ones that are going to be allowed to start testing the vouching uh, system. Those are the ones that will receive some SEP tokens, that the ones that can start vouching for some EVM packages that are already deployed, the ones that will be allowed to register EVM packages on our vouching system, and so on. And uh, you can follow this link where you will find a registration form uh, in order to sign up for, for, the, for the beta period. As I said before, it's open for everyone, so feel free to uh, apply, and we hope you do. And the registration is uh, finishing by mid-November, so please come and join us. Um, thank you so much, guys, for hearing me today. 